Hello friends, welcome to part two of our hoop coop build. So the footage you are about to see is unfortunate and it still hurts my heart. So what I thought was predator proof, I guess wasn't fully. It held up pretty well. Um, we have dogs that are not being fed properly or contained that got in and killed and ate our chickens. So you can see where they tried over here and right here and were unsuccessful. They tried, to, they were like, I'm assuming they jumped up on it with the way it's caved and everything. Um, tried here to get the wire open. The wire's on this up here. The wire's on this up here. Um, pulled out. And there are a bunch of feathers still. I'm so sorry, but there are no more body parts. <laughs> pulled out here. And I have fence staples every so often, but these were so hard to put in. So I was using regular staples. And I guess they found the one really weak area and caved in the wire and tore this off and got in and ate the rest of my flock. When we had them up over the hill, um, they got in and killed several of them. Um, so I made this to be pretty to proof and keep them out in it. And the latch on the door up there, like this part broke off so we could still close it. And Christopher had like a bucket against that door up there so that it couldn't fall down. And they straight up knocked, like knocked it over, pounced the door open after already getting in the chicken like yard. Um, which is why I made this. And yeah. It's so defeating. So defeating to have eight months of work and time and money and energy just gone. And we have new chicks coming soon to, you know, bump back up our numbers. And now I have no place safe for them to go, which I knew these were too big for the chicks. I was going to let them grow out in a brooder and then put them in here. I can't do that. So, I guess we're going to try to beef this up. So, <gasps> unfortunately, the predator proof hoop coop wasn't quite predator proof enough for hungry dogs. So, let me show you the upgrades that we have done to make it a little more sturdy. So, here is the finished product, and I will give you the tour, but let me first show you the upgrades. So I've got my two farm pups right here. We got rid of all of this 2x3 wire because it was honestly too bendy, and they were able to reach through way too easy and pull. And we replaced it with this hardware cloth all the way around the bottom. The second thing we did is instead of using these little staples right here. We used a whole lot more of the fence staples. Um, way closer together, some overkill, based if we accidentally bent them, then we try to do more. Tell them, bud. And I mean, they're, they're everywhere. We only came in with these um, as a temporary hold um, so that we could get the wire on straight and then we came back in and I mean just put a ton of them in all over. Another thing we did is instead of using um, zip ties, which are sturdy, um, so that there were no gaps where they could pull at, I took, I don't know if you can see, the wire that was actually wrapped around the hardware cloth holding it together. And I went in and basically sewed the 
chicken wire to the hardware cloth. So it's pretty much one uniform piece. They're not getting that apart because we used big, long wires. Around the back, um, they had caved this in. So we went ahead and added a brace here and another board up here, which I'll show you from the inside. And then we went ahead and put on a more permanent wind block and predator protection. Um, and again, basically overkill with the nails because we wanted to make sure there was no way they were getting this off. Again, on this side, we sewed it together. And yeah, all the way around and lots and lots of fence staples. For the door, um, we left this up top, but we did end it, add in fence staples instead of the regular staples. Um, so they're not gonna be able to get that panel off. We also added a board right here um, to give them a little bit of cross breeze protection, but also more predator proof because these were the two areas that they had broke through. We added this board because um, we didn't bring this down far enough or it, no, it butted right up against this board. And so to prevent them from being able to just push this in, we added that board. We also added a door stopper all the way down because this door was a little loose and could come in. And so I didn't want them to be able to push all the way in. And then on the inside, like I said, we've got um, wind protection. That's not structural. Um, and it's only held in by just a couple of nails. It's literally just to provide them some wind block where they roost. But where it is structural, we wrapped the wire around several inches on both sides. It comes down several inches. Um, this board is nailed into this on the outside, which we added across. And then um, all the this wire is then stapled in again. I did want to mention that this board is nailed in on all three of these boards all the way across. Again, maybe overkill, but I want to make sure those dogs are not able to get these new girls. So let's do more of the tour. So we have this little latch um, on the door that keeps it locked. And I actually have to grab the board to open it because um, it's a little tight down the bottom. Um, and it was a little tight up top. And honestly, I'm okay with that just because that kind of adds just an extra layer of predator protection that the door's a little hard to get open. So let's go inside. Now that I'm inside and shut the door again so the chickens can't escape, um, it is a six by 12 run and it has two six foot roost bars. Down here, I use um, an automatic feeder and water that I made out of um, Tractor Supply five gallon food grade buckets. And here are the girls on their roost bar. Not sure what to think of the baby, which I can understand. <laughs> These girls are still getting used to us. So I did lose my last three chickens. Um, we lost Jewel and Henny and Micah, unfortunately. So I picked these girls up at um, kind of a local flea market, jockey lot. Um, ours is called Trey Day. Um, and yeah, they, they are Easter eggers. They lay beautiful green eggs. I will insert a picture of their eggs here. Yeah, we've had them a week now in this new and improved um, coop. I do have plans um, to, we're going to rotate it in the pasture when we get a livestock guardian dog. Um, but it's kind of more stationary now. So I think what I'm going to do is add a um, predator apron, like a dig proof apron around the outside. Um, that maybe I'll just zip tie on so I can take it off when we get wheels for it. Um, and a livestock guarding your dog and are able to rotate it and rotationally graze them. This here, this bucket here, which has chicken poop on it, sorry, um, 
was actually, I'm assuming the people before us had horses, so I'm assuming it was some kind of hay feeder for their horses. Um, I threw it in here just out of, hey, I have it, let's turn it over and use it as like a little something. Um, and they actually preferred this to my bucket nest box, um, which is fine, my rabbits use this. So I'll just put it back in with the rabbits and the chickens can lay on the ground in this until I find something that they like better. Um, yeah, we've had an egg a day from them and they seem pretty happy in their new home. We've moved it once, it was right here and now it's right here on fresh green grass. Um, I just kind of pick it up and walk it. Um, but yeah. All right guys, so that is part two and our update on the hoop coop. Uh, I'm still bouncing a couple ideas around on ways to make it even more predator proof. Like I said, we're looking into getting a livestock guardian dog. I've um, bounced around the idea of the predator apron until we start rotational grazing it and even um, a hot wire around it. So. Yeah, even more updates to come probably, but for now, we feel a whole lot better about our girls being in this one. So, yeah, I hope you guys have a great day, and I hope your chickens stay safe.